Welcome to Joa Fitness Health Wellness Video Podcast, a space to ignite your day through positive conversations. We bring people that have created excellence in their life, sharing high vibration in their reawakening path. Hello, happy Friday. My name is Joa Rivas, and this is the first time that you join our podcast. I wanted to welcome you. It's Friday here in Toronto. I am a yoga teacher and Pilates teacher, and I have dedicated my last 15 years educating people about back pain and posture. And this is all about our brain and body connection. It's been fascinating for me because I had scoliosis when I was 15 years old. I was diagnosed because my chronic back pain used to affect my body. I learned how to improve my own body. And the last 15 years, I've been teaching other people how to also uh, free, uh, move free and also how to understand and be aware of our body. And my, my mission with this podcast, is this is the first time that you're here, is for you to get some solutions and perhaps open up uh, your, your, capac- your capacity to perhaps do a new uh, alternative therapy that you haven't tried before or to learn something new from professionals. And today we have as a second time our guest, uh, Neil Hallinan. He is a postural restora- restoration trainer and he's in the city of New Jersey. He's so, uh, so, um, so kind to be with us for a second time. Hi, Neil, how are you? Good, Joe. How are you doing? Great. Here in Toronto, we are getting the sunshine, and I think the springtime is coming very soon. And how is New Jersey? New Jersey is, for me, perfect weather because it's in the 40s. Oh, well, Fahrenheit. So uh, it's it's my preferred weather. Not too Not too cold, but not really warm either. I like the cold weather. Okay. Well... The good thing is that we are moving into spring, so we're going to be able to walk outside, and I'm going to be walking barefoot. I really walk walking barefoot outside, and it's very hard when it's snow outside, so I'm actually mm-hmm. looking forward to go to the park and start everything. It's one of the best ways to connect to our to the earth, but also to minimize, minimize the, the levels of uh, negative electrons in our body. So I'm excited for a spring. Last week, we had a conversation last Friday with Neil and we chatted about the, the neck, but especially about the jaw and the posture. And he gave us some of his discoveries about how the body tends to be dominant towards the right. And this is something that he learned through his uh, studies with the Postural Restoration Institute. So we learn about that. We also learn about the influence of breathing and the body and how actually the position of your jaw can influence in this. Today, we're dedicating this next 15 minutes about plantar fasciitis. And excuse me if I don't know how to say the fasciitis. Maybe Neil can tell us. How do you actually pronounce this word, actually? Uh, fasciitis, I believe. Fasciitis. I think it's okay, this comes fasciitis. from fascia, right? Yeah. yeah. Tell us a little bit about what plantar fasciitis is. Uh, it's just inflammation or pain. They, they'll probably say it's inflammation, but just think of it as pain on the bottom of your feet, on the bottom of the plantar surface. So the bottom, so if this is the foot, it'll be, well, it can run from the back of the heel to all the way to the, to the base of the toes where the plantar fascia is. It's like a web of fascia. And it's just, in, it's incredibly, incredibly painful. And I had it in both feet for about four and a half years. And it was, I basically felt disabled for four and a half years. It was that the pain was so bad that you really can't do much with your life at that point. Well, if you are hearing this and you are actually experiencing plantar fasciitis, please comment to us how did you feel this? Because the pain can come in so many different ways. Actually, Neil and I decided to talk about plantar fasciitis today because he comes from the experiential wisdom. And I always say to people, we can teach something until we actually experience the pain or we experience that situation. And why not to bring a topic where Neil has actually experienced this. Um, my, in my family, I know many of my family members and my clients that comes with a burning sensation. Sometimes it's excruciating, like somebody's just like stabbing a knife on the bottom of your foot. And it's so discomfort because we're literally walking 
most of, of our the day we like somehow we have to move we have to walk and it could be aggravated in the morning it could be actually aggravating in certain uh, activities so we need to know that if you suffer from plantar fasciitis you might not think that it's a swan, but it's also a very common painful condition, right? So for this one, it could be related to a dorsiflexion. It could be related to uh, an issue that the calf comes. So tell us a little bit more about this, Neil. Like what is the, for, from your experience as a postural restoration trainer, what is the main issue of a plantar fasciitis nowadays in, in our society? So the, the human foot needs to go through cycles. Everything in life needs to go through a cycle, a complete cycle. The human foot needs to go through supination at heel strike, pronation at stance phase of walking, and then resupination as you push through the big toe to go forward. When that stops happening, you get, your foot literally gets stuck in one half of the cycle. What you'll find most often, and of course, everything I'm saying is gonna come from a postural restoration standpoint. And the picture that I'm gonna show about the upper body is gonna explain what I'm talking about in greater detail. But when we get stuck over to the right side and our pelvis turns to the right and it stays there because our brain wants us over on that right side, that's the whole basis of postural restoration. What you'll generally find when I ask someone where they feel their weight on their, or what, where they sense the ground underneath their feet. On the right foot, most people are gonna say the right heel and the outside, which already tells me that they're living in a state of supination. And because they can't get to their left side appropriately, they'd actually never pronate, not completely. So they're walking in a state of supination. There might be some pronation of the right foot, but if the right foot doesn't pronate enough at the same time that the pelvis above it is turning to the left and you're landing on your left foot appropriately, then pronation doesn't really occur. So pronation is just is more than just a mechanical motion of the foot. It's a relationship of the mechanical movement of the foot and the ground underneath it. Your brain needs to sense the ground come up underneath the arch of the right foot as if you were walking barefoot in a nice park. Your brain will sense the ground because it's uneven, come up underneath the arch. But we live on flat floors. We live on cement. We live on flat surfaces and flat is not good for a human foot that has an arch. So because we live in unnatural circumstances, a lot of people lose sensory input to their foot, because especially if you have a high arch, you're never going to sense anything touching the inside of your arch because you're, if, even if you're bare, especially if you're barefoot on flat floors, there's nothing there. There's just complete space. So you never actually pronate. And so you never actually go to the left. Your brain has to link two things, the arch coming down with the left on the right side with the heel of the left side, making simul making contact. So a lot of walking is actually having two feet on the, on the surface at the same time. It's not one foot or the other. I think, I think something like 40% of the gait cycle or thir between 30 and 40, I'd have to look it up, in, involves two feet actually being in contact with the ground at the same time. It's not one or the other. It becomes one or the other when you pick the other foot up. But a lot of it is two feet. It's a double stance phase of, of walking. And that transition is where we get stuck. Okay, so, so that is very helpful to understand. And that actually was our last talk we were asking you, like, are we dancing? Are we actually walking off beat? Because yes, to give yeah. a little bit of a break, I know you guys are like, okay, this is so, so much, uh, you know, technical words, but you know what, Neil is a dancer. He's a dancer. As, the same way as you're hearing that he's very uh, passionate about explaining how we're actually walking, how we are connecting to our sensors and how our receptors are coming from just our feet. There has so many terminologies there. And you, you are so, so sensitive on our feet. He actually knows a lot about this because he's a dance, dance and teacher. He's a dance teacher. So um, he actually, to remind you, if you haven't heard our last talk, uh, he actually studied I started with history and then he moved into, into IT where he developed a lot of uh, body imbalances and he realized that his jaw was off alignment. 
and he had to do a lot of uh, work to be able to improve his posture so much that he completely quit the IT work and then he moved into the postural restoration institute where he learned how to actually his own body how to to heal it and then now he's sharing all this education plus he's dancing he's happy he's like coming back into the natural way and that's why he's actually sharing with us this so I wanted you all to to know about to tell to let you know about Neil and why he's telling us all this now one of uh, our reminders so you know that one out of ten people at least experience plantar fasciitis in the lifetime, especially between 40 to 60 years old. But I actually have clients before, like they have clients, very young clients at 20, 30, they're already oh, yeah. having plantar fasciitis. And sometimes there is, sometimes they do a surgery to be able to alleviate this. And this happens a lot with people that are runners. So if you're a runner, you probably could experience this. For those women that are wearing high heels, could also affect the uh, plantar, uh, the plantar position of the body. And the thing is, like what Neil was saying, is that we may have not, we may not be using the proper shoes. We actually have before a doctor from Australia, and uh, actually, doctor. Um, um, he was a podiatrist that I brought into the call and Andy Bryant, he talked ab about the transition from a traditional shoe, which is more of a fashion trend shoe, to a minimalistic shoe. Very important to have proper shoes, right? To be able to, to connect to our body. So tell us a little bit about the connection of our posture and our feet. And if the plantar fasciitis could be also a, re, a whole chain of reaction because our posture is off, as you were talking about the heat. Tell us, tell us a little bit more about this. Okay, so this is where I want to share that picture. Okay. Yeah, let's look at that picture. For All those right. looking at the YouTube channel, we're now showing a picture. For those that actually listen to it, he's actually now showing us a picture where we have two people walking uh, away. <laughs> and okay. tell us about it. Okay, so. You can see this, correct? Yes. Okay. I want you to look at the man. He's on the right. Yes. In the first picture, the picture on the left, he's on his right foot and his left foot is starting, is in the air. It's starting to come off the ground. Okay. Now look at his right shoulder. It's yes. low. His right shoulder is low, which is normal. If you're on your right foot, your right shoulder should be down. If you're on your right foot. Now I want you to notice the second picture. That's just normal walking, although his arms are not swinging very well. That's, that's an issue. But now look at the second picture. His right foot, this is the transition stage where he's trying to leave his right foot. This is where pronation of the right foot would happen. And his left heel is making contact with the ground. You can see that his hips never start to shift to the left. He's still pointing to the right. His, his butt is facing the same direction that it was in the first picture. But if you look at his right shoulder, it's still low. It's not rising. Okay. He's still, so his brain, his body is still on the right foot, even as his left foot is making contact. And now when you look at the third picture, he's yeah. on his left foot, but his right shoulder is still lower. Mm -hmm. That is not, that is a patterned walking. That is postural restoration right there. That is a right dominant human who even when he puts his weight on his left foot, his pelvis and his rib cage and his spine and his neck, his scapulas, everything is still oriented to the right side. It never turns to the left. So what does that mean for the foot? It means he's never truly, if I bring my, if I, if you, can you see my model again? Yes, we can. That means his right foot is never appropriately pronating and then resupinating as he, he doesn't push through his big toe. He doesn't go, he does not go from supination to pronation to resupination again. That okay, can only yes. occur if his body actually turns to the left and his left shoulder drops. Otherwise, what he will, what he's doing likely is he's just walking on the outside of his right foot the entire time. Mm -hmm. He never goes through the cycle. And until you can go through a full cycle of supination and pronation and supination and pronation, that plantar fasciitis or that plantar fascia, it could happen on the left side also, could easily become tight because it's constantly in a supinated position. And when it becomes supinated, the foot will tighten because you're, you're stabilized. Yeah. At pronation, the foot should relax. 
as it goes into mid stance, so it can adjust to unstable ground. That's not mm -hmm. happening on his right foot. He's staying in a supinated position on that right foot. So if you keep doing that for years and years and years, that right foot is going to tense up, and that plantar fascia, that plantar fascia, is going to be tense. He needs to use the left side of his body. So tell That's us a little bit more has. about that before, because we are going to wrap up our call today with a very strong solution, or at least an alternative way. If you guys can just listen to this part, it's one of the most important part of our calls is always to give you uh, an exercise that you can actually practice perhaps um, under the supervision of your doctor. I understand we are only sharing some information and we always advise you to follow your physiotherapist. But in this case, uh, as a postural restoration trainer, what uh, for someone like this that is actually not able to fully finish a cycle on the step, how would you uh, suggest them to exercise uh, daily to be able to release this uh, pattern or at least to, well, to learn and retrain and brain connected uh, the way to, to improve this? So there is no easy way in the sense that this person actually does need to learn how to, he needs to go through a postural restoration program, okay. which, which actually trains this exact issue. Okay, because it's, so it's not, but on the other hand, something that someone could do would be as they're walking, make sure they can, their arms are swinging. You should be, if you're looking straight ahead, you should be able to see your hands out of your bottom peripheral vision with each step. Okay, so let me just stop you there. There are two things that you guys know. We are, we have two postures. We have the static posture when we stand. And then yeah. we also have the dynamic posture where it's the one that Neil is explaining now. Yeah. Dynamic yeah. posture is the one that we actually use when we are walking and where we're performing movements. So right. talk, right. talking from that perspective on the dynamic posture, can you please tell us uh, what to do, what to practice and for how long a day? Well, so this is what I would do for dynamic posture. So what I'm saying is if you can see your hands out of your bottom peripheral vision, your brain has a better idea of where to put the next step. So you should be able to see your hands out of your bottom periphery. That means arms are swinging. If arms are swinging and you look at my rib cage, it's rotating. That gentleman in that picture has a rib cage and a spine that are not rotating. It's the upper body, the rotation of the upper body that will drive, that will uh, allow the foot to go through supination through the complete cycle. So okay. what you can do without doing any PRI programming is simply pay attention to how you're walking, make sure your arms are swinging so that you can see your hands. But the other thing is you can start to pay attention to your left periphery because as your brain starts to sense or see the peripheral awareness on the left side, your body weight will start to shift to the left. Someone who's patterned is only paying attention to the right side. They don't realize that, but that's what's happening. So peripheral vision, paying attention to the, the, the world on the left side of your body going past you as you're going forward, making sure your arms are swinging. And the other thing is sense your left heel hitting the, hitting the ground as you're walking. Okay. All of those things. Now don't yeah, do we it. We got that, constantly. we got that. Yeah, don't do it constantly, but you can practice doing that just a little bit and you might start to feel your walk start to change because that's how I can get people's ranges of motion to change very easily. Their body okay. starts to relax once their brain realizes they have a left side to work with. And so that's, it's hard to understand if you don't have a good PRI background, but it's a neurological issue. The muscles and the bones are not really the issue. It's a brain that has become too aware of the right side. So much so that they're never using that. That guy is never getting onto his left foot appropriately. So super right powerful, foot. super powerful. I hope you guys are taking notes. So basically, remember that first, swing both arms at the same way. So probably dancing will help you so much to be aware of moving naturally. This is just a natural way we actually will come to you as you retrain your brain and also pay more attention towards the left peripheral mm -hmm. uh, part of your space. It will help you yes. to restart and retrain your brain. Thank you, Neil. Oh, one other thing, they can walk with music. Walk with music, okay. If they, have, if they have good rhythm, that guy in that picture was walking off beat. He was only on his right foot, right? So he was off beat. If you have good sense of rhythm, find something between 100 beats per minute, 106 beats, 108 beats per minute, 
And if you can dance, if you can dance, well, if you can't, if you can dance, but if you can walk with the beat and have your heels hitting the ground with the beat, your walk will change. Yes. Well, so powerful. We're talking with Neil. He's a pre-trainer. He's a posture restorational institute trainer, uh, certified. He's all about this. He has a YouTube channel. So we invite you to follow his YouTube channels. He's pre-trainer Neil Hallinan. I'm going to post a write down on the notes. His last, uh, actually, uh, post was related to the glute breaches and actually how ineffective they, this could be if you don't know how to do them properly. So please follow him. And if you have any questions, you can send it to us, to his channel or to my channel. We're here to support you and to release any back pain and to make you aware of the power of retraining your brain. Thank you so much, Neil. And remember that together we are a stronger. We invite you to subscribe to this channel and share with your community. Please leave comments below. And if you like the episode, click the like button. Have a beautiful day.